It is really relaxing <laughs> to find something about yourself that is completely dependable. But what is it? What is it that's completely dependable about yourself and what is it that's completely dependable in life? That's a good question. Um, I had never really even considered that there was something that was dependable about me and about my life until I came to the Balance View training. Um, I think before I came to the training I thought life was about trying to um, I guess I'd broken it down as to something like life was about trying to have a really good time and not hurt other people, something like that. And so that's what I tried to do. And, um, and I, I was quite good at having a good time. And I was okay at not hurting other people. But the problem with it was that um, it was really unsatisfying. There was no real satisfaction, no matter how hard I looked to have a good time, the good time never lasted, you know, the, the, the positive experiences or the happy thoughts, I, I could never hold on to them. You know, they always went away, something happened, something unexpected, you know, a, a bag getting broken into or um, just waking up one morning in a bad mood or nearly getting run over by a motorbike or just, you know, something would happen and, the, and the, the, good, the good feeling, it would just disappear and then I'd be annoyed. And so what I saw was that I couldn't depend on my moods. I couldn't depend on the way that I felt because it was always changing. And so I, what I thought I had to do was to do everything in my power to create this good mood, to create this positive experience. And, and so that's what I did. And I put all of my time and my energy into that, trying to set everything up so I just felt as good as possible all of the time. Um, and it was a lot of work and I tried really hard and no matter how, how hard I tried um, and setting up these great circumstances and great experiences, the circumstance would change and the experience would end and I'd be back down to just feeling bored again or um, or even when the experience went really well there was still just a sense of something missing and I saw that I couldn't depend on this way of life it was I, I just in the end found it was pointless you know it, it was like it was kind of hollow this seeking after this experience and so coming to the Balanced View training and, and being introduced to um, open intelligence or awareness and just the simple instruction just to stop thinking for a moment and notice what remains when you stop thinking. There's an alertness, there's an intelligence, there's something that's aware of the next thought that arises and you can call this awareness or open intelligence. And Part of my um, life before coming to Balance View had been this sort of spiritual search. You know, I'd been on a spiritual search to understand the meaning of life, to um, understand the meaning of me, to try and work out what was going on and what does it, what does it all mean? You know, what am I meant to be doing here? And uh, I never come to any answers, but it was, seemed like a fun thing to do, another thing to sort of fill my time with. I'd read loads of books and had amazing conversations with people, but I still hadn't come to any conclusion. And then I came across this training and this simple suggestion that, well, you've, now you've been introduced to awareness or, or open intelligence. You know, when you stop thinking, like there it is again. There's something that's, that's still there. There's something that's primary in your experience and you've identified it when you stop thinking. But when the thought comes, or the sensation comes or the experience comes after you've stopped thinking and maybe you don't even notice the stopping of the thinking. The thinking is so prevalent. But it's the same intelligence, it's the same awareness that is the basis of the next thought. And so I was given the simple suggestion that um, for short moments, whenever you naturally remember, just stop describing everything and rest as that awareness. Rest as that open intelligence that you've identified when you stop thinking. 
and see what happens. And um, I was kind of intrigued by this. It was like, um, it was something I could test for myself in my own experience. It wasn't something that I needed to believe. It wasn't somebody else's experience that I needed to like accept or reject. It was something that I could use to look at my own experience to see whether this awareness or this open intelligence was actually what was dependable and reliable about myself. And then what happened when I relied and depended on it? What happened when I acknowledged it? And so I, I went away and I, I tested this and it was, it was fascinating. Because, you know, as you go through life and each day, you know, all kinds of things happen. And even if you're doing nothing, so you're just lying on the beach all day. I don't know about you, but my mind is just so active. You know, I can be lying there doing nothing and then suddenly I'm back in school and then I'm off what's going to happen with my next job and where am I going for dinner and just this, just everything going on. So there is always this dynamic display of experience, this, this stream of data. And we can just simplify it all and say it's, it's just all data, all points of view. And all of this data and all of these points of view occur within this vast expanse of awareness or open intelligence. And so with a short moment, what I was seeing was that in each moment I had a choice. Like how do I use my um, intelligence or my energy? Like where do I put my focus? And so I can put my focus onto the descriptions about what's going on. And there's a never-ending stream of descriptions about what's going on. So um, I'm really upset that the way I've been treated by this company. That thought can suddenly pop into mind. And not only is it a thought that just pops into our mind, you know, we really have been treated badly by this company. We're justified in having this thought. But then what happens when I start to run with that thought? There's a sense of injustice, there's a sense of victimhood, there's a sense of helplessness, frustration, irritation. And I'm lying on a sunbed on the beach, and I'm meant to be relaxing. And all that's going on is this frustration, and what am I going to do, and why won't they take responsibility, and you know, well, somebody needs to do something about this here. Well, how about somebody doing something about it is me resting as the awareness that is aware of all of these thoughts and feelings. Because when I do that, what I find is that there really is this great sense of ease, this sense of clarity, this sense of complete perceptual openness that is naturally present regardless of what I'm thinking, feeling or sensing. And it's such a powerful choice to make because it's a choice of relaxation. It's a choice of clarity. It's a choice of seeing what will be of most benefit in this particular time, place and circumstance. So for example, if I'm lying on the beach and I'm relaxing and I'm caught up in all of these thoughts, all of these dramas about something that's happening or happened recently or something that happened in the past and I'm completely consumed with that, what can I actually do about it lying on a sunbed on the beach? Usually there's not a lot. So why not just actually relax? Even if it's just for an instant. And it's so beautiful to see that I have this choice. And from that place of relaxation, I can see everything much more clearly. So if there is some action that needs to be taken, I can take that action in a calm, relaxed and powerful way. Where I'm no longer so caught up by my anger or frustration about the situation because I know what the nature of the anger and the frustration is. It's the dynamic display of awareness. It's a passing um, experience, a passing thought. I allow it to be as it is. It flows on by like a line drawn in space. Awareness is still there, reliable and dependable. And I rest as that awareness. And then if I need to make a phone call to somebody and chase it up yet again, I can do that in a really clear, powerful way. Rather than from a place of frustration and irritation and they've got to respond to me like this this time, otherwise, 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 I'll just lie on the sunbed thinking even more. <laughs> and so what you're recognising here is a clarity of thought, an ease of being and an openness of relating that you actually know 
is always possible. So when you come to this training, you're not learning anything new, you're not hearing anything new. When I came, it was like, this is so familiar. It, like, I, I've, I know all of this. And I knew there was something about me that was constant. Like, what is it about me that has been there all the way through my life? Like, like what is it? I can't quite pin it down, but there's, there's something there. And this is one of the qualities of awareness or open intelligence is that it's actually indescribable. We can't quite pin it down and yet we're all completely familiar with it. And so this is why the instruction just to rest as open intelligence for short moments repeated many times until it's obvious at all times is so easy. It's so nice to hear. It's so relaxing. We're simply hearing about the way that things already are and we simply rest as that. So nothing needs to change in your experience for you to recognise what the basis of that experience is. Like nothing needs to change. And I, I, I remember hearing that when I first came and it sounded so nice, nothing needs to change. And then I was like, but if they had any idea what my thoughts and my feelings were like, they wouldn't be saying that. <laughs> and actually, what's been fascinating and these, the training process is really examining the details of everything that I think and feel and experience from the vantage of open intelligence. And we have an incredible training called the Twelve Empowerments where we look in detail at everything that we think and feel and believe from the vantage of open intelligence to recognise it as the dynamic energy of open intelligence. Because otherwise we go around believing and behaving as if the things we think and feel and experience have a nature separate or apart from open intelligence. And the problem with that is that everything then becomes a struggle and a conflict. Our own thoughts, our own feelings and our experience become something we need to manage and control and try and get to look in a particular way so that we can feel comfortable, so that we can understand what's going on. But here, we go directly to the ease of being, the clarity of thought, that is the basis of whatever it is you're thinking, feeling or sensing. This is your awareness. This is the open intelligence that's looking through your eyes right now. So this is the direct perception of the nature of mind. So your current thought, that is where you will find open intelligence. So nothing needs to change for you to recognise the basis of your experience. And then what Balanced View offers is a way that you can train up your capacity to recognise that, to rely on it and to utilise the power that you actually have available to you as a human being. And it's a power of great love. It's a power of great, great benefit where you actually see what you're capable of. And this is to be increasingly at ease with all circumstances, with all thoughts, emotions and sensations, to be powerful, to be loving, to be a caring, genuine human being where there is no need to pretend anything anymore. You can simply be you. And this is a great relief. <laughs>